Hey guys, so today we're going to do something that's really important and that's making coffee. When you're camping in the morning, you got to make some coffee. And I have some helpers today. I have Noah, who, go ahead and show Noah, who's here to help me, and Mina, who's holding the video camera. And Mina and Noah are the two kids that gave me this Mucha Libre <laughs> thing, and that's why I have this Easter egg in all my videos, just for them when they watch. Okay. So I'm going to show us how to make coffee in two ways. And these are my two preferred ways to make coffee. And that's one with this, um, this coffee maker. It's a, it's a bubbler type coffee maker and it comes out the top. And the other is a French press because today I'm going to make a large amount of coffee for a number of people that would be camping with us. We're not really camping though, right? We're just fooling around in the car, in the garage. And I, I recently got this portable coffee grinder, camping coffee grinder, which I, I think is really great and I, I want to give it a shot today. So we're going to start off with uh, the first kind of coffee maker is using this. Ah. Spill water on yourself. And because my two helpers are here, I'm going to make some hot cocoa too, not just coffee. Because they got to have some. So we're going to use this Jill's Organic Rose. And uh, the gardeners are here, so we're going to talk over the the sound of the lawnmowers too. Get some coffee in there. Oh, that was cold. And we're going to put that top on. And there's a cranking handle that comes off. It's really quite convenient. And you just keep cranking this until you feel a lot less resistance and then you know you're done grinding your coffee. And I'll show you what it'll look like. It, it works amazingly well and I think it cost me around $10, maybe even slightly less. So I'm grinding quite a bit so it's going to take a while because I like a lot of grounds in my coffee. But there's also a window for you to see how much coffee it is. Can, can you see that on the video? Yeah. That's all you can see it, but you can see the level and then you can determine if you have enough coffee grounds. And I think that's going to be enough. I'm going to put the coffee grounds in here. And you can take a look at that. That's um, a little coarse. I can smell it. Put it in there. Okay. Put this cap on and this <coughs> coffee maker, just the steam rises to the top and it fills up the top reservoir. And, and it pushes the pressure through that filter and that's why <coughs> it gives you the nice flavor of um, pressure coffee. Set up this. This is a butane. So you, you want to be in a, a slightly, at least some kind of slight ventilation using this butane lighter. As you see, it took me a couple of cranks before it actually lit, which is actually a little rare. It usually goes on the first one, but there's always some gas escape, so you want to make sure that uh, you know you're, you're safe. <coughs> Okay, so uh, now that it's, it's starting to boil, we're gonna come in and you could actually kind of hear it. Oh, there it goes. And that was good timing. So when it, when it boils, what I like to do is make sure it's all out. And, and you could kind of hear, just keep an eye on it. You could hear when it's ready to, when it's all boiled out and it's ready to go and you can see all the steam coming around here. And I'm, 
I should have turned it this way, which is usually the way I prefer to do it. But, uh, you know, you can see that there's a lot of steam buildup in the car. So, again, it's, it's good for a little ventilation. And that should do it. I'm going to turn off the flame. And now all the water should be in the reservoir on top. And we're going to just pour it in like that. And that makes you a, a nice pressure steamed cup of coffee while you're camping. Now, Noah, you want to smell that? Tell me, does that smell like good coffee? It smells like good coffee? It smells like good coffee to me. So that's this is a great way to make one cup of coffee and the next is uh, you know you don't want to do this for the five people that you have camping with with you but you maybe you, you might want to but if you do have a larger group uh, the next step is using this French press which we're going to do next all right so while I'm enjoying this cup of coffee I am going to start making the, the second um, closer to a pot of coffee than a cup of coffee Man, that's hot. Okay. So, I'm going to use this cabinet that I just made and get my um, my tea kettle pot. And Noah's going to help me pour in some water. Oh, what? Okay, you want to screw that on so it doesn't spill out. And yeah, you'll see that time it turned on the very first click. Um, but still, it, it's always good to uh, be safe. And we're going to watch this coffee pot boil. Okay, so while the water is boiling, what I'm going to do is this time I'm going to use this uh, organic Sumatra coffee that's already pre-ground because that individual grinder is probably a little bit small for for this big uh, French press um, I mean of course you can do it but it's going to take you a little bit of time so in this case I'm going to use the, the pre-ground coffee and we could here oops, close that so it boils a little bit faster we can hear that the tea kettle is almost ready to go and once that is ready to go we're, we're going to put the water straight into the French press <laughs> this burner boils amazingly fast it gets very hot and it, it boils water quite quickly Right, we can see the steam is beginning to come on out and depending on how hot you like your coffee uh, at any time when it starts steaming like that it, it's boiling so you, we, we could do it at any pretty much any time if you like your coffee extra hot you know let it steam oh, a little yeah. bit more and uh, what, what I, I like to do is I, I do like it extra hot because I want it to sit inside the coffee grounds for just a little bit so yeah I'm gonna make sure it's, it's steaming a good amount That should be good. I'm going to turn this off and then release the pressure on my um, my stove. Put that up. Hot water. And we're just going to pour hot water in. And our eyeball estimate turned out to be pretty good. So we're just going to let it sit. And um, this is a matter of personal preference. How how long you prefer to let this sit for. Uh, some people like to let it sit for a minute, but you know, it's up to you. And I have a coworker that uh, uses a coffee press every day and, and he uses the pump technique. Uh, so I like to go slowly down and, and get that good pressure build up and push the coffee through. He likes to use the pump, um, which I, th I think works out well, but I find that if you use the pump technique, you get more bits 
into your coffee itself. So there we have a small uh, cup of coffee for the rest of our group. All right, now, so we're going to do the most important thing of every camping trip, and that's making hot cocoa, right guys? So I got my two helpers, and they wanted to be a part of this also. All right, here we go. We're going to show you guys how to boil water and make hot cocoa. So the steps to hot cocoa is pretty complicated. You got to add water. You boil the water. Oh, it's easy? Well, why are we showing everybody how to do this? Is that, is that enough? Yeah, seems like it's enough. All right. We're going to turn that on and we're going to watch water boil again. Again. But uh, with uh, the hot cocoa, since the kids will be drinking it, uh, we don't need it to steam immediately. I uh, steam really, really hot, but we do need it to be hot enough to dissolve the hot cocoa. All right, so you get one pack, and so shake it right so you don't spill it when you open up the pack. All right, and shake it, and yeah, go ahead, open the pack. Where it says tear here. Let's show the people where it says tear here. All right. Go ahead and tear there. Can I pull it? Yeah, go ahead, pour it in. So all of it? Yeah, all of it. All right, so we have two properly prepped cups of hot cocoa. And oops, I forgot to close the cap again. I'm going to enjoy some of my coffee that I made earlier. One nice thing about the metal cups is that, you know, it, it doesn't break. And when you're driving, it doesn't clang around. But it's really, really hot. <laughs> when you're trying to drink co hot coffee and the whole cup is hot, not just the coffee itself, it, it's a little bit hard to get your lips on. You know, that's a drawback of the stainless steel cups. But, you know, they're, they're easy to clean and they don't break clank around you're okay these uh, porcelain cups we got from inside the house because you know, I didn't want the kids to burn themselves okay so the water is uh, you know it's boiling it's not steaming really hot which is the way I like it when I serve hot cocoa for the kids turn that off release the pressure all right Two chopstick, uh, one chopstick makes two stirs, right? There you get one, you get one, and let's right, see. Here you go, and you guys could demonstrate to our audience how to stir hot cocoa. Yeah. There you got hold by the handle. I there think you I, go. I was doing it the wrong way, but okay. And go ahead and sample it. It's hot. It's hot. A little bit at a time. All right, is that good hot cocoa? Yeah. All right. So that's how you make hot cocoa, and we're going to sit here and, and enjoy our hot cocoa and our coffee in the camper van. Bye, guys.